Okay, it's Friday night, um, about 11 p.m. I'm in a hotel room in Batavia, New York, which is about 45 minutes east of Buffalo. Tomorrow morning, I start a road trip from Buffalo all the way home to my home in uh, central New England, seeing sights along the way. Uh, the reason for the trip is um, I'm writing a book about New York, and my deadline is here imminent. Um, I still have a few sites to squeeze in, so tomorrow I'm going to try to squeeze a bunch of them into the short winter daylight hours that we have. So, I will see you tomorrow early. Early. Poultry guys was filmed. Awesome. And here was the abandoned church that was their headquarters during filming. I think they even filmed some scenes here. Now that that um, little bit of cinema history is over, we are on our way to Rochester, where we'll start seeing some pretty cool stuff. First on the docket, though, since we get to Rochester, is Mount Hope Cemetery. Uh, it's a pretty cool cemetery in general, I'm told, but the two main reasons that I'm visiting are, one, to see the graves of uh, Boyd and Parker, who are two Revolutionary War era soldiers, whose story I'll get to later, actually, because we're going to see some cooler sights connected to them. And the other one isn't for the book, just for my own interests, uh, and that's the grave of Edward R. Crone, the POW who um, Kurt Vonnegut based his Billy Pilgrim character off of for uh, Slaughterhouse-Five. So, some interesting stuff. So, listen to the absolute worst music you can find. Um, the kind of music that makes you feel guilty for listening to it, or awkward, or embarrassed if anybody saw you, because I guarantee you that you can't fall asleep while feeling guilty, embarrassed, and awkward. You just can't. And there he is, Edward R. Crone. All right, next we're going to uh, the Fox Sisters Monument. Uh, the Fox Sisters were, the, uh, of course, the three sisters who pretty much jump-started spiritualism in the U.S. Um, by claiming they could communicate with the dead. Um, Rochester was their jumping-off point uh, for fame, I guess. No death, there are no dead. <laughs> Alright, we're off to um, 
the Genesee High Falls, which is a waterfall where Sam Patch, a daredevil known as the Yankee Leaper, um, died back in the 1800s, uh, just a month after jumping over Niagara Falls and living. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to see the falls and find where his grave is located. Uh, he, he jumped in November, and then that, that spring thaw, they found his remains farther down the river. Alright, most of us will die in our bathrooms, but Sam Patch died here. There you go, Sam Patch's final resting place. Waterfall, winter under ice, here. Next on the agenda is the Castle of the White Lady. Um, typical myth about a ghost of a woman haunt, searching for her murdered daughter. Um, just to haunt the environs of uh, Durand Eastman Park. The interesting thing about this legend is they actually point to the remnants of an old wall as what's left for a house, a castle. The truth is, of course, that uh, this castle is just the remnants of an um, old picnic pavilion that used to be there a long time ago. So the answer, as always, is really mundane, but I still like the fact that they've tied this ghost story about this, you know, tragic mother and her murdered daughter and uh, gave it a place to stay. And there you have it. That is the Castle of the White Lady or its Three Lakes Pavilion. Alright, next up is um, the grave of George Eastman. Uh, George Eastman was the uh, guy who founded Kodak Eastman and pretty much invented the portable camera. You know, changed society as we know it as a result. After his grave, we're going to go to his house, actually, which is now a museum, art gallery type place. Um, but inside it, they actually have his suicide note. He committed suicide in his 70s. He was sick. And um, probably the best example of the genre of suicide note there is. And this is the George Eastman house. So here is George Eastman's suicide note. Um, to my friends, my work is done, why wait? Also, parts of his casket, his death certificate, codicil to his will. Request for cremation, roses from his coffin blanket, and his memorial service. Pretty much this is his death case. Fascinating. Alright, I just got a text from Sharon Coyle, who owns um, Rolling Hills Asylum, Rolling Hills Asylum in East Bethany. Uh, she's offered to show me around the place. Um, basically what it is is a 200 year old poorhouse that these days uh, lets ghost hunters run through it. Uh. All right, it is 2.30 in the afternoon. Uh, I just spent the past hour and a half wandering through the abandoned Rolling Hills Asylum in East Bethany. Right now I'm headed to Leicester. Leicester? I'm not sure how to pronounce it. But um, there is the 
infamous Boyd Parker torture tree. Now, Boyd and Parker are two soldiers who I alluded to earlier when we visited their remains in uh, Mount Hope Cemetery in Rochester. Uh, these two guys were part of Sullivan's troop during the Revolutionary War and were actually taken by the Native Americans and tortured uh, to death in absolutely, you know, grislier fashion than usual torture, I guess. But uh, there's a lot of different versions of the story. The one detail that's always there is that the uh, Native Americans either tied them to a tree by their intestines, by their entrails, or they nailed their entrails to the tree and then made them run around the tree unraveling their intest miles of intestines they have, or we have in our gross, gross bodies. Um, so traditionally a tree still stands there in that area and they've uh, it's in the Boyd and Parker Memorial Park now. So here is the base of the Boyd Parker torture tree. It's a uh, lot of tree to be wrapping your intestines around, that's for sure. Things pretty massive. I'll step back here in a little bit and get you a better shot of it. And if you look over here, according to this official looking plaque, it was alive during the Revolutionary period. So basically what they're saying in nice language is this thing had intestines wrapped around it. Here's a medium shot of it. Still can't get the entire tree in. It's gigantic. Well, one thing's for sure. All you really need is love. And let me say I'm happy for you both. I don't know, but the Egyptians hadn't invented obelisks. We wouldn't know how to memorialize anybody. Earlier today, we uh, saw the Fox Sisters Memorial in Rochester. And on it was inscribed a little uh, cabin uh, symbol, basically. So now we're going to the site of that cabin in uh, Newark, New York, which is east of Rochester. Um, the cabin doesn't exist anymore. It was moved to Lilydale, New York, the spiritualist community, decades ago, and actually burned down, so it doesn't exist anymore. But apparently they've dug out the foundation or something and made kind of a, I guess, another memorial to the uh, three girls who started spiritualism in the U.S. Very weird. Alright, here we are at the site of the Fox Sisters cabin. See, they put a building over the foundation stone. Uh, the building's locked right now. It might always be locked, I don't know, but so I can't get you a good a shot of it. Them. We did more than a dozen in about nine, nine and a half hours. I'm not sure how many miles we covered. Uh, I'll look it up later and uh, stick it in this video somewhere. Probably right around here. Um, so, so basically, it was a uh, flawless victory. I'm happy with it. That sounds stupid. <laughs>